So we're going to be doing something a little bit different today and I'm going to switch off the repair system and I'm going to completely dismantle this. So the idea is uh, this is going to be a start of possibly some more episodes that I'll be doing where I try to play through without having a certain system installed at all. And in this case, uh, it's going to be the repair system. So I'm allowed to use the parts from it, which will be the benefit, but the system itself uh, I can't use. I think this is literally everything that I can uh, take out. Oh, no, there's still a data connector as well. And is there anything else? I think that should be it. Okay, so that's done. Uh, so we're not going to have the repair system for this one. Now, uh, I haven't replaced these yet. And uh, as soon as I'm done with this, I'll tell you a little bit more about why I came up with this idea. So, yeah, there's a couple of reasons. So, uh, there we go. That's the first hit. Um, uh, okay, we've got something here that's not working. This is a bad fuse. Um, now, luckily, we have one spare from that system. This one seems to be okay. Not sure why I got an error there. Uh, but we'll need to take care of the fuse situation over here. So we get the fuse out. Get this one in. Right, okay. Perfect, this is all right then. Uh, let's just grab on. So, yeah, so basically, uh, I thought this would be a good idea because while we're waiting for the update, I think one of the interesting sort of modifiers you can put on the game is to not have a certain system from the start and just have to deal with that. And I guess, like I said, in this case, the upside is having some spare parts. Uh, but I thought that starting with the repair system would be interesting for a couple of reasons. So the one thing is that I did see some people posting uh, saying, you know, sort of reviewing the game and saying that it's an issue, the repair system, because basically it just means you play the game in one way and every time something breaks, there are just certain specific parts that you, you sacrifice and you fix things. So first of all, I don't completely agree with that because um, the way that the sort of economy, if I can call it that in the game has been set up, is that it is better to just replace parts with systems from other parts than it is to scrap parts. You, you lose out when you're scrapping parts. So if there's any way to not do that, uh, you, you don't have to. And I've been in cases, especially with the hardcore run that I had recently, where I would, for example, in that case, I was using the, what was it, the, a power transformer from the repair uh, station, and I was swapping that out with the battery fast charger and kind of going between these two systems. That actually reminds me, don't need to have this switched off. Uh, let's just quickly... Uh, let's just quickly get rid of some of the systems that shouldn't be on or shouldn't have batteries in them. Uh, so I can care of this one. We'll do the same here. Switch off the fast charger just in case we get the electric storm. Uh, here we will get rid of the battery as well. And what did I miss? This one hope I didn't miss any other systems in terms of the batteries. Yeah, so in, in reality, you know, I don't completely agree that, or you can definitely play the game by just every time something breaking, uh, you just go to the, the repair box for that. But uh, I don't think it's the most optimal way to play it. And of course, you know, if you do have a problem with that specifically, this is something interesting that you could try is just by ripping this system out completely and just seeing how long you can survive uh, by just having to swap out parts and, and basically decide which systems to keep online. Of course, it, uh, it is going to be, as with a lot of these runs in this game, down to the luck of the draw as well. Could this be a data cable error? I think so that's not displaying which I don't know if I'm too bothered about that now well actually I think I can just replace the, the data cable without having to switch it off pretty sure this does uh, this is safe if I can remember where it is that is how oh, it's up here let's see 
Perfect. Okay, so this has been used then. Uh, and we'll close this back up again. But yeah, as I was saying, uh, of course, you know, if the, if the wrong stuff breaks here, like if I have, uh, say, for example, the big power transformer is breaking, I'm pretty sure, I don't know if there's only one. Let's have a look, actually. Because the, so there's a large power transformer in here. And then, oh, there's one in here as well. So I kind of have one spare, which would mean having to live without the gravity. Uh, but if the second one goes, then that's kind of it, because you don't have the repair box. So there are definitely some random damage situations, which would just very quickly bring your run to an end. But something else that I'm interested in trying out would be to, well, just play with some without some of the other systems. So I'm definitely keen to uh, see what it would be like to play without the, the main computer, which would mean having to look up things in the technical manual when they break, uh, because I won't be able to see what the codes are. I think uh, that's how it would need to be done. Uh, but of course, I wouldn't be drawing power from the system, so that would come with a benefit. I want to see if it's possible to play without the oxygen uh, system. I know that should be possible because you can still manually vent oxygen into the air. Uh, and while we're talking about that, let's just swap these out. I'm interested to see if I can play without the, uh, the carbon dioxide scrubber, but I don't think that'll be a very long video because uh, the problem is you can still vent oxygen into the air and then you can still use the pressure generator, I think. We'll see how that run goes. To, uh, to try and work that out. But if you can't use the carbon dioxide scrubber, I am relatively certain that there's only one way to get rid of carbon dioxide in that scenario. And that is to open the airlock. And if you've seen any of my previous Let's Plays, me starting to mess with the airlock is usually an indicator that I'm about two to three minutes away from, uh, from dying. So, We'll, we'll see how that goes. That's definitely something that I want to do at, at, at some point. Um, but also let me know if you have any other ideas for, for ways that you can start the game or rules that you can sort of impose yourself in the game that could make any given run more interesting. So... Yeah, so far we have not really had to use the repair system yet. I guess that I may as well put these over here um, because I don't have much use for parts that are partially damaged at least, and both of these are. I don't know if there's any use in a fuse that has been damaged because I don't think this fuse is completely broken. I think it's just damaged. I, I don't know if that still, if it can still work under certain circumstances and it only fails under certain circumstances. Uh, I know some parts work that way, so the uh, the power transformer is a good example. I think if it is damaged, it still works, but it just doesn't work as well as it usually does. So, um, and then, of course, you should be able to completely break it, in which case it doesn't do anything. But, uh, uh, Ice Nebula, okay. So uh, first thing we need to do here is stop the system, try to spike the temperature a little bit before this event starts. So far, not having the repair box has not slowed us down at all, uh, but it will eventually. At some point, we're going to run out of one particular type of part. Uh, and yeah, at that point, it is going to be a real problem. So let's see. Actually, something else uh, that could work for... Okay, I'll talk about that now. Let's just get rid of stuff that doesn't need to be on right now. So switch these off. Um, we need to have those on. We don't need the lights, obviously. Not that this takes much power. We don't really need the gravity, so we're going to get rid of that as well. Because in all of this, we're just really trying to conserve battery power. Um, and then I'm going to try something that I usually don't do, which is um, let's switch these systems off as well, just for a little bit. Uh, 
Okay, I'm not sure why exactly that's giving me an error right now. Although, I've just realized there's a downside to this. Because to keep heat in the main generator, we do need to have systems running. Uh, anyway, the reason why I wanted to do this is um, something that I forget about sometimes is that these monitors take power as well. And yeah, I should actually think about taking them out uh, in situations like these. But just be aware that you do need to switch off the, the system to do that because otherwise I, I think it causes uh, electrical faults sometimes. Let's uh, make sure this filter is clean as well. Still have plenty left in the bottle. Yeah, it seems to be the case. We'll go over here, see how we're doing on the power situation. Everything else is fine. In terms of the, the pot's temperature, I don't think there are going to be any issues there. It should be fine. So this is probably going to go on for a bit, so I might just uh, cut the video here and go straight to the end of the, uh, the cold. Okay, so this is coming to an end, uh, which should mean that we'll be okay going forward. Let's get the, the gravity back. This will mean that we'll be drawing a little bit more power than we're producing right now, but... Uh, that's okay, because we do need to heat up the atomic pile again. There we go, we've got gravity. And then I want to see how much of this battery that we use. Oh, it doesn't look like we really use much. We might be using some now, because I've just switched on the gravity, but I think that was pretty well managed. So this will catch up to meet the demand. Uh, let's start switching on other stuff as well. We'll do the lights. Just want to kind of gradually do this, so keep heating up the atomic pile. Oh, that hardly uses anything. Uh, what's next? Did we use any battery power? Not enough that I can, that I even need to worry about switching that back on. Um, we'll switch these out, get this going. That should take a little bit of extra power as well. Then uh, temperature is more or less where it should be, but we'll switch this back on. Okay. Again, we're all caught up. So what else? Uh, I guess before I switch on the main computer, I don't want to see if we even used a little bit of electricity here. We're going to recharge this. I don't know if in the grand scheme of things this will make too much of a difference because it's barely used battery power, but uh, there we go. That's fully charged. And then we'll recharge this one as well. I may just be trading off between the batteries at this point, because I'm sure that the reason why that one went down one more was because I was busy charging the other one, and that meant there wasn't enough power left over for that system. And as you can see, carbon dioxide scrubber just went out, oxygen is still on, that's probably because it's running off the battery right now. But I do think net-net we're gaining a little bit here. So we'll get this back in. Yeah, so 16 minutes in, really not a lot of problems. Uh, I don't know if I should have said that. Maybe that was a maybe that was a bad idea calling it this early. We can switch this on as well. At least we know we never have to switch off the repair station because uh, technically we don't have one.
damaged battery. Oh, that's a shame. I just charged it. Let's keep it in there for now. I mean, I can't do anything with it. It's still got charged, so I might as well keep it in. So we'll just leave that. Always a little bit concerned when I see warning lights from up here. Because, and I've said this in previous videos as well, but generally, if you have a good run, it's because stuff doesn't get damaged in the main generator. So there's nothing wrong. I think sometimes uh, you just get a, a false warning light when the pod gets struck. At, I mean, there's no other explanation that I can think of for why that just lit up. Let's see this one. Bad processor. That's just gone away as well. Interesting. Okay, I have no idea why it's saying that. Come to think of it, I have no idea what the processor does in the gravity system. I've never tried to take that out and run it without it. And I'm so curious to do that right now that I don't want to end this run early just because I did something stupid. So if anybody does know what the processor does in the gravity generator, uh, let me know in the comments. I'm really curious to know. So, but it's fine. It, it doesn't look like this is causing trouble for us. So we're just going to let it be for now. I don't think there's too much to be done right now. Uh, battery's full. We can... I mean, we've barely used this, but may as well replace it. There's no reason not to. All the rest of the stuff in the ship still seems to be okay. So, yeah, I've got to say, uh, this game, for something that released into early access, it is so well polished. I mean, I've, I've played this so much now, and I, I don't recall ever facing bugs or at least anything serious. And uh, it's actually such a shame, because if you look at the reviews, I think the last time I checked, it's like 96% positive. Not a lot of games get that sort of ratio, which means that everybody that's bought this is, is really quite satisfied with the game. And what I would do if I were the devs is just keep expanding the gameplay, keep adding more content, because the core of what's here is, as I said, already looks really good. And, you know, once they get to a certain point, they should just market this game as much as they can. Because I, I genuinely think the reason why this hasn't exploded more on Steam is just because people haven't noticed it. When, when I clicked on it, the moment I saw it, I had to buy it. It was exactly what I was looking for. And to be honest, the, the name Tin Can, I, I wasn't really sure what that meant. I think if I didn't hover over and get a sense of what it actually is, I wouldn't have realized that it's this sort of space survival simulator, which is uh, it's kind of exactly what I was looking for. And I love these sorts of games. Um, I also have, I'm trying to remember what the name is. There's another space uh, flight survival simulator, which is... Well, not flight survival, but just space simulator, which is kind of similar to Subnautica, but just in space. And I've played that a bit, and I enjoy this more, uh, just because I think that they've gotten all the survival elements right, and it's just it really is just a case of needing more, more content. So this is a pretty chilled run, I've got to say. Um, Sometimes you get lucky. I mean, I think that the fact that we didn't get hit with asteroids in on any systems that caused this serious issue, because, I mean, you can have your first hit. Oh, here we go. OK. Let's quickly deal with this. Um, get this opened up. Switch off the lights. Switch this off. Switch that off. Open this up. That off. And same for this. I think we got everything. I hope I didn't miss any. 
Uh, right. This is probably still the toughest uh, event in the game. Now I shouldn't forget to to get our critical systems back online. Something else that I'm curious about, and, and we'll probably find out how well that works, is how long you can survive by just uh, venting oxygen instead of actually using this system. Uh, now, I don't want to do that now because it is going to increase the pressure and that's a different problem to have. But if you're using the pressure system from time to time, that'll solve that problem. Temperature hasn't become a problem yet. We're going to let it get a little bit colder in here first before we do anything about it. Okay. Oxygen and CO2 are under control. And we're starting to get cold, but we'll give it a little bit more time. I think this can go down quite a bit. If I remember correctly, you can get quite a bit colder. Actually, based on my last uh, hardcore run, and I recorded just the last couple of minutes of that uh, because I didn't realize I, I would actually get that far into it, that you can get pretty cold before you actually need to do something about it. But I don't think we can just wait out the storm completely. I think it will become an issue before before the storm is over. Let's sort of reposition ourselves up towards this. And then just get rid of this connector because I don't want to switch this on. While there's a, there's a risk of getting struck by the lightning. Uh, and while it's connected, of course. Now it should be fine. Okay, let's, let's not risk is this too much. We'll just switch it on for now. For a little bit. We'll put the buzzer back in when... when we've sorted out the temperature situation. So it stops as soon as you get above 10 degrees Celsius. Which actually happens pretty quickly. So now we can switch off the master warning, just pop that back in, and we are done. Um, I'm going to switch this off again, because I think now there should probably be enough residual heat left so that we can actually ride out the storm and just run it off the power generator. have our oxygen generator and carbon dioxide scrubber working. But first thing I want to do after this, just to increase our chances here long term, is get those batteries recharged. And I think we can recharge two of the batteries without running into issues. If you've seen my video about power and battery management, you'll, you'll know why doing more than two at a time could be an issue, but it can become a problem. It does seem like the storm is getting better. I can never quite tell with the electric storm. I'm not sure, like with the other events, how you can spot the end of the event. And it definitely feels like this is one of the longer electrical events that I've seen. Okay, that's it. It's done. So we will switch the power back on. We'll get uh, gravity switched on as well. Something else that I'd love to know if anybody has figured this out yet is why when you don't have the gravity switched on, 
the power generator um, gives that emergency buzzer because it does that every time and I have no idea why. Okay, so this should be running off the power now. Uh, these are not running off the power. Let's switch this off. Switch this off. Find the power connectors. Uh, let's start with the carbon dioxide because this is usually a problem for oxygen. So temperature is not an issue anymore. Uh, keep looking. Is this because of the oxygen? I guess so. Maybe I should have checked what the oxygen levels were before I decided to prioritize the carbon dioxide, but we should have had, I think, plenty of time on both of these, most likely. Oh, that was dirty as well. Very dirty. How are we doing on power? Actually, let's get some light in here first, so that I don't have to keep using the flashlight. Uh, it's caught up. Okay, so we can get the main computer back online. Don't know what the issue is here. It's running off the battery. Why? It shouldn't. Oh, it's because I just switched on the main computer, so the atomic pile is still heating up. Uh, but that's okay, we will take care of... Oh, let's sort this out quickly as well, and then we'll try to get some batteries charged, so... Get a fresh bottle in there. Okay, so this should be fine. Uh, I can close these up. Just so that it doesn't get in the way. That's fine. Uh, as soon as we have... Okay, so I think the we've got enough heat in the generator. What I'm going to do is I will grab this empty battery, switch off the main computer, and then immediately charge this up. We can do this while there are asteroids going on. I mean, there's not, there's not any particular issue with doing that. It's an issue doing it during most of the other events because uh, most of the other events involve you getting less power from the generator, which means that you can't really charge batteries because of the insane amount of power that takes. If you can read that over there, you'll see that the the power output is nowhere near enough to, to meet the demand from that charger. I saw sparks, but I have no idea what broke. I do generally advise hot swapping when you're charging batteries like this, but I don't think I'll have enough heat and enough power output from the main generator that it's going to cause a power surge just yet. If I put a third and a fourth battery in here, we'd probably start getting into that dangerous territory, but for now, it should still be okay. I really want to say that I think this run's going to get up to an hour, but, uh, and maybe you have some idea already, depending on the length of the video, but I do cut out uh, some of the boring bits in between sometimes, so that's not always an indication. But I'm also kind of scared to get ahead of myself here because you never know what could go wrong. Yeah, I need to get this battery out. Wow, I am really risking a surge here now. I, <laughs> I didn't realize the power output's this far ahead. Yeah, okay, I've... I should not have done that. What's the problem? Was it the CO2? Was the O2 as well? Why is the O2 a problem? Oh, because I never switched this back on. 
need to figure out what's wrong with this system. You see, that's what happens when I get ahead of myself. Uh, we may not make it to an hour here, but I need to figure out. So the O2 system, I don't have time. We're going to vent some manually. Let's see how much we got in. That'll do for now. Something is broken here. I can't see what's broken because... Okay, so CO2 might be a problem as well. Low battery, bad power transformer. I have a spare, right? So we can just sort this out. Okay, so we have the low battery issue. Wow, okay. Um, I don't know if the readings weren't right or something, but that happened a lot faster than I thought it would. But uh, yeah, I mean, basically, this just goes to show that you don't actually need the repair box. It's entirely possible to play the game without it. I'm sure I could have made it to an hour if I um, figured out faster what was busy happening with the oxygen and CO2 situation. And of course, uh, I caused that myself by uh, creating too much heat in the power generator and then creating a power surge which uh, damaged a lot of those systems so that was really being me or just me being an idiot not not the game's fault but uh, it's definitely worth trying if you want to try a different variation on the game to just take about the take apart the repair system and see how far you can get uh, if you do like these sorts of videos as always please do like and subscribe and i'll see you for the next one